Egypt, and he's like number two to the Pharaoh, right? Mm -hmm. And so then all these people that are living up in Jerusalem are starving to death. The Jews. The, the Jews and the whole house of Israel. Do you have your come follow me stuff or just pop? I don't mm -hmm. have scriptures. Pop, but yeah. I wish. You're telling me you don't have a set of scriptures? No. I got one. Jerem, mm -hmm. you left the come follow me table to go get your supplies for come follow me. But and you came back Where's with a packet book? of apple cider. Son, stop doing that. That is. Will you sit down, please? Oh, oh. Jet, did you get your supplies for Come Follow Me? I'm going to get it. Or did you just get chips and salsa? Yeah. He was, he was learning. He was experiencing the vision while he was oh. thinking about his family. What, Kobe? Do we have to do this? Yes. Tell me again what the great and spacious building is. <laughs> what is it? It's a great and For me, they rejected the words of the prophet. Wherefore, if my father should dwell in the land after he hath been commanded, more than just a title. Among other things, it lists several purposes of this sacred record. Look for the purposes. And then if you start with the Book of Mormon this year, no best suggests that you feel... He feared to lay in a menu. Yea, he feared lest that they should be cast off from the presence of the Lord. And he did, did exhort them with the feeling of tender par parent that they would hearken unto his words, and perhaps the Lord would be merciful unto them, and not cast them off. Yea, my father did preach unto them. Okay, it's George's turn. Okay. Okay. 29? 38. Ah. Um, so that we can remember that the Lord will do that for us in our life. Mm -hmm. um, with getting the plates, then you know why that's so important. Because, because Nephi's faith became un. <laughs> So, at the beginning of the year, we started with, like, journals and stuff, and it was kind of fun. And then we got towards, like, the middle of the year, and my dad started doing, like, these really long, boring lessons. <laughs> and <laughs> my mom's were, like, more fun. And then we stopped doing journals. But, like, it's still just a good thing that helps a lot. When we get the kids interacting and talking, and we have some really good gospel conversations sometimes, that's the best part of it. But uh, it can change from week to week. It depends on how the kids are doing. I'd probably say listening, learning, and then acting and whatever can bring me to the gospel more and strengthen my testimony more. We're still trying to figure that out, and it looks different from week to week. Some weeks I feel like um, it's definitely pulling teeth to get everybody gathered, and it's a struggle to keep everybody's attention when we have everybody from a 12-year-old to a 10-month-old we're trying to figure out, it, it's difficult to keep everybody engaged. So some weeks there's a lot of eye rolling and laying on the floor and like, oh, this is taking forever. And then some weeks, it. thankfully there are other weeks that just make it all worthwhile and that like, help us remember why we're doing it. I mean, we always know why we're doing it, but some weeks like we see the reward even in the moment. I know that there will be long-term rewards for establishing these habits for our family and for our kids, but some weeks it's a real struggle. And so I like the weeks when it all comes together. We actually do come follow me separately. We probably should do it as a couple, but because we're like this in our lives, um, we do it individually. We discuss the concepts of come follow yeah. me as we're together. I mm -hmm. mean, we work in the temple on Saturdays, so it's a great time for us to discuss things. And we've had a lot of things happen throughout this last year. 
together, um, other individuals in our lives that have been challenging, and it's been wonderful to have that influence and to have answers to our prayers through Come Follow Me. Today we're going to read the introduction to the Book of Mormon, which is super cool. So everybody gets a card and it has a word, a special, special word on it. So here's the rule. Here's this game. We're going to read this whole introduction. It's going to take a little bit because it's kind of long, but it's really interesting because it tells us where the Book of Mormon came from and what it's about, what we can expect to read in it and why it matters. Their words, written on gold plates, were quoted and abridged by a prophet historian named Mormon. So this is the stone archway and the top part is the keystone. So if the keystone was taken out, the whole see. archway would fall apart. So that's the keystone, Katie. So the archway is made of several, like lots of different independent stones. And there's one at the very top that kind of connects both of the sides. Do you guys see that? Well, I think it's important that we do what the Lord commands us to do, and it may not be easy to do. I mean, that was a real difficult mm -hmm, thing that mm -hmm. he was commanded to do, and we've all been given commandments that are very challenging, and mm -hmm. they become easier over time, but um, like to love one another, to do all that we're asked to do. Yeah. And although we're very, very busy, we have to still balance our lives, and and make it a priority. Dad and I were talking about that the other day, is that the key the key to staying strong in the gospel is knowing that there is that factor of faith and we're not going to know everything at all times. And that's okay. Um, if you guys look at the introduction, we're gonna start reading. It was written by the Hand of Mormon. And I think that's really kind of a big, thing that I want you guys to realize that it was Mormon who wrote this. An abridgment taken from the Book of Ether, also which is a record of the people of Jared, who were scattered at the time the Lord confounded the language, language of the people. The very first thing, the purpose of the Book of Mormon, is to show unto the remnant of the house of Israel what great things that the Lord has done. Yeah. So there was something on this podcast that I listened to when I prepared these Come Follow Me's. Then it says, what would happen if we treated our Book of Mormon like we treat our cell phone? What if we carried it around in our pockets or backpacks? What if we turned back to get it if we forgot it? We want you each to have a Book of Mormon. And we're going to challenge you guys to take these Book of Mormons everywhere that you go. Keep it in your backpack so that when you're having a moment where little dead time, pull out your Book of Mormon and read it. We're gonna take the challenge of having the Book of Mormon, using it as much as we, maybe not as much, but in great comparison to how you use your cell phone. And we have to read that thing. One aspect where, where there has been changes, it's caused me and, and all of us, me and Julia especially, to be more intentional about gospel study in our home. Um, it's, it's not something that, that was ever just going to happen. It's happened every week and it's never happened on accident. It's always been on purpose and, and we've, even on the rough weeks, it, we've, we still feel the spirit in our home and, and it's been a huge blessing. It helps me put my nose in the scriptures. Definitely more. Unfortunately, I'm I'm the servant that has to be told you need to. But then once I'm once I'm there, then I'm okay. I think starting with the New Testament was a big change because I've never really studied it. I read it bits and pieces, but never like I read it with this. And gaining the testimony of Paul and the person that he was. I mean, he's on a pedestal to me now, and I want to meet the guy because I feel like he went through so much and brought so much and just testified so much to Jesus Christ and it really changed and touched me. Probably one of the most challenging things we had in our life happened this last year and and so as I'm reading about Christ and how he just loves everyone no matter what, no matter what he loves, he loves everyone and I thought I can do that. I can love everyone no matter what. 
And so my heart was softened and I, I, I started to put those individuals on the prayer roll at the temple and I felt myself becoming more at ease with what was going on in our life. And um, I think that was probably the most influential thing is I, I had to learn how to be more at peace, have a spirit more in my life and to love individuals for who they are. All of these experiences are to make us better and to help others be better. And, um, uh, and when we do, when we get to share them with our family, with our friends, with people we don't even know, it's, you know, it's just making us better people. <laughs>